At the time and for a long time, I can easily say that this song, They Gonna Talk by Barris Hammond, was the most significant song in my young life. There's a lot of stories that come to mind, both good and bad, when I think about this song. My very first summer out of high school was spent in the BVI, away from my friends and family. And that's where I first heard this song, at a bar called The Quarter Deck, at the Bitter End Yacht Club, where I was staying. And this song's lyrics sort of embodied the struggle I was having with this girl I was in a relationship with. Her mom was a wicked lady who was always against us and did her best to forbid our love. It sounds bizarre, but she even did her best to facilitate the atmosphere to get her daughter to sleep with my best friend. While I was in the Caribbean that summer, my so-called best friend, with the help of my girlfriend's mom, was trying to make inroads with my chick. To make a long story short, after my relationship was sort of destroyed by my so-called best friend and my girlfriend's mother, I beat the living piss out of this so-called best friend. The fight started when I ran into her and him at a party and she came running over to me to tell me that she loved me and not him. I then spit a giant loogie right in her face and he proceeded to attack me and that's when I punched him over a couch, jumped on top of him, pounded the living shit out of him till his brother pulled me off him. I gave him a seriously good beating that night and supposedly after I left the party he went to a friend of mine's house and got a pipe and tried to attack my friend on his front porch. Apparently that didn't go so well for him either and the pipe was taken from him and then he was beaten with it. I guess as a last resort that night he went all bloodied up to my ex-girlfriend's house and got on his knees and cried on her driveway until her mommy came out and took him inside and bandaged him up. It was kind of a fitting end to see that the two shitbags who had betrayed me were together in that moment of failure. Needless to say, I don't think that the girl he was trying to steal from me thought it was a good look for him to show up at her house, having been beaten up twice and crying about it. As a side note to sort of show the character of this girl, she took a picture that night, a picture of me holding my ex-best friend by the neck with my fist cocked. It was the punch that literally launched him over the couch before I gave him a pounding. She was really proud of this Polaroid. After coming off the greatest high of my life, which was that summer in the Caribbean, I was faced with the greatest betrayals of my life at that time. There was no other friend I had offered more brotherhood and fraternity to and to be betrayed was a true heartbreak for me. Since I knew the world was bigger, since I had just seen that it was, I sort of blamed everything on my small little hometown. My dreams were always bigger than that small town, but those betrayals put me into motion. Shortly thereafter, I packed my shit and moved 2,800 miles to the most isolated place on earth, and I never looked back. It's crazy how just a few events can change the trajectory of your entire life. And sadly, though this should have been a fool me once sort of event, I let it become a fool me twice, shame on me a decade later. This was one of those unfortunate times where you relive a trauma an extra time in life when it's totally unnecessary. With that said, 
looking back, I find it all to be a bit of a tragic waste of time for everyone. And to be totally honest, I'm not sure what I ever did to make the good Lord think that I was deserving of any of that. Ever since then, however, any woman who has dated one of my friends and then proceeds to flirt with me just disgusts me. My code of conduct was defined by these events. If you have dated a friend of mine, you will never go out with me, ever. Thank you.